This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash rogue, sign up and get 75% off. That's $2.99 per month and you get a month for free. Hot yeah. Hot yeah. That's my new catchphrase. I like it. Hot yeah. Hashtag hot yeah. Do you have any fashion choices from your past that you deeply regret? No, because I do not regret looking like Guile from Street Fighter 2. Uh, but a friend of mine had these ridiculous pants that went up to his waist <laughs> once. And this is the home of the pants. <gasps> I was trying to be silly, but now I feel like I'm in hallowed ground. That's right. Okay. I should have warned them. The pants are dope. They're dope. You don't have to tell me. They know too. Everybody knows. We are here at Nouveau in Austin, my favorite vintage shop in the world. And we're here with Talina. She's gonna give us some tips on how to look cool, which we desperately need. I don't even care about looking cool. I care about not looking like a chump and being a sucker. I don't wanna pay overpriced. I don't wanna buy stuff that is, is garbage. Vintage is a scary world for me because at least in the mass market, you at least are wearing the same crap everyone else is. <laughs> Whereas at a vintage store, it's like you're making a bold decision of how you're gonna look and, and I'm constantly afraid of buying something overpriced and wrong. What should I be afraid of when I walk into a vintage shop? You shouldn't be afraid of anything. Snakes. One, you should, <laughs> you should expect to find something. If you walk into any store expecting that there's nothing in here for me, you're not gonna find anything. You're not going to attach yourself to anything that you find because you've already put it in your mind that you're not gonna find anything. You have to go in with a good mindset to begin with, right? Right. So if you are really tall and you have really long arms and you're like, oh, my arms are always, you know, everything's always too short and you don't wanna roll them up, just walk around the rounders and look for a really long sleeve. And that's what you take into the fitting room instead of everything that you just think is handsome. Ah, Does no, that this make is sense? good. So before you even walk in the door, you should note what tends to be problem areas for you and play to your actual body structure. Absolutely. And not just say, oh, I like that, I like that. And then you put it on and you're like, oh, and this then, isn't oh, right at all. Works. Yeah. Okay, great. What constitutes like a bad vintage store? You were talking uh, about lighting, for instance? Yeah, a used clothing vintage store if it has really poor lighting, all the clothes are used. There's most likely going to be damage on a lot of things. And you're okay with it or you're not okay with it. I personally wear t-shirts with blood on it all the time. <laughs> I don't care. But Same. if you don't want to wear Same. a t-shirt with blood on it, you need a store that's well lit or a store that notes when there's damage. A lot of time on the tags will write as, as is. is. So then you can look, oh, what is the as is on this? It might be ring around the collar. It might be a burn hole that you don't care about. Then you just decide for the price, for the damage, am I okay? with this item. I never even would have thought about that. I would have seen as is and be like, well, it, sure, it's as is, but but as is is a clue that for is. find what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of times it's noted on the tag, right? It'll say, right. you know, spots here, missing a button. Like you said, you have to make sure that it's something you're gonna be okay with, that you're comfortable with. Like, oh, that stain is down here. I'm gonna tuck this in anyway, so not a big deal. What kind of places do most vintage stores source all their stuff? I guess maybe a lot of garage sales? Could you imagine going to a garage sale and finding this much cool shit? The people who are going to garage sales most likely are the people who have pop-up shops and stuff. They're the people who have time to go out, have a good Saturday morning, right? And go to estate sales. If someone like me who is gonna have 150 snapshots out at one time, I can't pick up one shirt here, one shirt there, and have a store full of good stuff. I have to find other sources for it. So there are rag houses. I don't know what a rag house Textile is. Textile recycling warehouse. Oh, got it, okay, great, okay, got it. You know how sometimes you'll see those mailboxes and people drop off clothes? Yeah, clothing donation to benefit this charity or that charity. Exactly, a lot of times the charity never even sees the stuff that's in those bags. But they do the see charity the charity is selling that to a rag house who buys it at pennies per pound or something, and then a sucker like me says, I want all your Western snaps, and they pull those out and then sell it to me for a way higher of a price, and then I wash it, mend it, steam it, tag it, put it on the floor. I assume that we're not gonna find a lot of stuff that just came out five years ago here, but 15 years ago or I guess 25 years ago? Like, at what point does it enter vintage appeal? Well, it probably depends on the store, right? Yeah, it depends on the store. So there will be some stores that just classic vintage, so they might only do 1960s and earlier. They don't even wanna fuss with anything um, newer than that because they're going for a very specific aesthetic. I like street style more than 
anything else. So I like people who buy any random thing and put it with another random thing and feel like a badass and walk around and that's their style. Like that, my favorite look is called all my favorite things right now. So like if these are my favorite boots and these are my favorite overalls and this is my favorite t-shirt, this is what I'm wearing today. Okay, so that leads me to another question because a lot of people uh, place these artificial constraints on how they're dressing themselves and I did that for a long time too. Like I'm only going to buy things from the 50s and oh, I can't wear that because that's from the 70s and this is these pants are from the 50s. That's ridiculous. You can't do that. But that's not really true. Well, I'm mixing eras, I think, is style. I think when you stay within one era, you look like you're wearing a costume. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So you can play with that kind of uh, postmodernist mashup culture, but you have to give intentionality to it, not like right. so, you just step through a time gateway. Yeah, so if you're going into a vintage store and you don't want to look like you're from the 1950s, then don't buy everything from the 1950s and you'll be all right. So another thing about vintage stores is that I perceive that I don't have the guidance to make sure things go together. And, and I love that, that you gave me permission to clash. Do you have any general rules of thumb on what tends to go together in terms of anything from, I don't know, color combinations or style combinations? Or think, how, what should I look for? I think a lot more of it is proportion. If you're wearing a tighter shirt, you probably want tighter pants. If you wear a loose shirt and tight pants, you look like men in tights, okay. right? Yep. If that's not the look that you're going for, then and either wear a tighter shirt so that the tightness is matched, you're just like, yeah, I just like tight clothes. The end. So it still looks on purpose. Super baggy pants, teeny tiny shirt. Like if you're trying to do like the Jinko late 90s thing, wonderful. <laughs> But if you're not, you just need to keep it proportional, right? So some people will come in and I want a skinny tie from like the 19, you know, 50s. And they can be really small, but they have humongous heads. So all it does is accentuate. Again, this is this is knowing I your body when you walk in. And it looks terrible. Oh, that's good to know. And, and if you like crazy <laughs> 70s ties and you have a big head, Go for it. I do have a really slender tie that I wear with this like shark skin suit and I got a gigantic head. <laughs> you just end up looking like it a balloon. It just looks like shoestrings. <laughs> like right? a, 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 a bolo tie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh so man. So proportion I think is a big is a big deal. It seems like every constraint that you place on yourself is artificial and it really should just be what you feel good in. And right. I guess it really is. It's a matter of just confidence. Which makes you walk around in confidence. Yeah. yeah. I think what you just need to do is that you walk around and anything that looks interesting or sometimes makes you think, oh, I wish I was that person. Just f***ing try it on and be that person. See how it feels. See if it feels right. Let's go. Let's leather go. Leather pants. <laughs> oh yeah, plenty of leather pants. They got leather pants. Over there. <laughs> All right. Okay, a good chambray, that's good. Pointy collars, I like the pointy collars, very retro. That's, uh, that's, a big, that's a big possibility right here. Not real into short sleeves, nope. <laughs> Although, this looks like I'd be on safari. That's kind of cool. Mm. I know I said I didn't like short sleeves, but the pearl snaps are where it's at and that thin material is gonna be good come Austin and summer. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. All right, where are the pants? <laughs> I feel like the pants are gonna be the hardest part for me. What are Mario's overalls made out of? What? Denim, denim, denim. <laughs> That's so good. Are, are there any non-denim pants? There are some over there. Oh. Yeah, oh. This you'd have to go this route right now. Yeah, okay, In all right. Here. Hmm. I feel like he's gonna go the high class route. <laughs> You know what? I'm not gonna start with pants. I'm gonna go for 70s t-shirt looking stuff. It will look great in this. Sort of light jacket. Yeah, those are all too heavy. I just get so hot in Texas that, no, oh, here it is. Here's the one. No, also too heavy. I think I need to bring more fringe to the show. My problem is that I dig those 70s cut shirts that are kind of tight, but I feel like if I'm gonna do this right, I should have some kind of like jacket flare or kind of overcoat thing. Oh my God, a trench coat. Mm. I'm experiencing that same paralysis. I gotta get over it. I love these kind of tees. Kind of into that. Like an old German field shirt. With the German logo on there, that's kind of cool. Perhaps, perhaps. And now we need some bell bottoms. Some corduroy bell bottoms would be fly. 
Everyone watching just kind of laughs and goes, oh, oh, he's serious. Jason, how confident are you in your outfit? Pretty good, pretty confident. Mm -hmm. Feeling good. Looking good, feeling good. <laughs> just not finding any mediums. A medium's probably not gonna fit. Oh, because Sizes are gonna be different. You probably should go to a large. To a large? You may even end up wearing an extra large, depending. Really? That's yep, just that's because just everything shrinks? That's the nature shrinks? of vintage. Mm -hmm. The sizes are totally different. All right. Done. I wonder if I should cheat. Delena. Are you gonna try on corduroy pants? I think so. Okay. This is what I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. This whole combo? That jacket might be too small for you, but oh, it really? looks a little short. Oh, a little short. Chambray's Lord. in. Should I uh, should I put a layer over it or just go as is? No, I think a jacket is smart. Okay. Jackets are always smart. What about? Uh... Yeah, it's really it's gonna be really warm. Yeah, <laughs> that's wool. I don't know what to accentuate. Like I dig the the straight out of '87 uh -huh. look yeah. of this, but I don't want to go full '80s. Are you looking for a jacket or pants? What are the other options on pants? Because if we had to do the grandpa synthetics, then that'd be a weird match. Not if they fit you well. I mean, you're just going to look like you live in Austin. Yeah. You're going to look like a bartender. I almost want to try a vest. Man, this is breaking my mind. Maybe you can add color with a flannel. I am into flannel. I'm, I'm, I keep gravitating I, towards I know, the green. I know, you like that green. That's good. Yeah, like you should that. try it. Let me think, that on top of the, the blue with the cords? Mm hmm yeah, the same color palette. Okay. Without so, doing all the same color. This is good. I feel like we'll it's- see, We'll see how it looks. We'll see how it looks, okay, okay. <laughs> this seems so wrong, I want to try it. Is this too dumb? Is this too crazy? The pants and the shirt? The pants and the shirt and, the, and, and this overshirt? I mean, maybe not. You just try it on and see how it looks. You probably wouldn't want to be wearing those shoes. Yeah. So sometimes, personally, with my style, if I were to wear this as my jacket, I would match this with my shoes. Like this is its own outfit, and then the jacket and the shoes are its own outfit, and then it magically works. That's brilliant. Okay. You see how that goes? Yeah. Okay. So, so then, 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 if I'm looking for something to match that the your shoes, shoes, then that matches the shoes, but this does not match your yeah. shoes. Yeah. Like you'd want to be wearing your brown boots or something if okay. you wanted to make the two outfits work together. See, this is this is what I needed to learn. Yeah. There you go. Like that all together and then you can still be wearing your same shoes. All right, I'm rocking this. I'm done. It's decided. So, oh, that does work. So, yeah, which feels better? Okay, hey, I'm cheating. I'm getting help. <laughs> I guess that's the biggest lesson of all is don't be afraid to ask for help, right? Yeah, I mean, right. You guys know what you're doing. Well, ish. I'm gonna try this and see how it lands. See if it fits. Yeah. That's the all hardest right. part. It is decided, sir. Are we ready? Yes. All right. Why don't they just have like sliding fireman poles and you just come down and you're suddenly dressed? That'd be pretty rad. I'm describing Batman. I feel like the pants are gonna be the big X factor for me. Yeah, they might end up being too bell bottomy. No such thing. Ha! So far, so good. I feel like you stacked the deck on this one. <laughs> Next time, we're gonna do a fire eating contest. That's no fair. All right, three, two, one. Dude, you look freaking great. That's classic Jason right there. And that is stylish Brian with some flares that uh, I usually don't see from you. I'm digging it. <laughs> you yeah. look just rugged enough that uh, maybe, maybe you just finished chopping wood and now you're gonna give your teenage son a talking to. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm not sure about this. This might be a little too big, maybe? Yeah, I missed the mark on the pants. I think the color is the right thing, but 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 that, look at this. This is quite literally how high up they go. That's perfect. It, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but I love, I'm, I'm thinking I might be better without the jacket. I think you're great just like that. I think you're great just the way you are. Aww. I think I'm gonna keep the top part and then just uh, just wear my denim. But I think I think I'm gonna take these. I'm digging this, but I don't I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's too boxy. Yeah, it doesn't your shoulder you have narrow shoulders. And that, those shoulders are too wide on that. Okay. So then they make you look a little slovenly. Okay, yeah. We don't want that. No. Everything else, the pants, the right. Yeah, length. pants are great, the shoes look great. Yeah. Like this is like this is a summertime in Austin shirt. Like yes. you're wearing a shirt and feel like you're not wearing a shirt. You do That's have the point of an as-is moment happening right Oh yeah, right it's here. the whole thing is as-is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm that's missing like, a button here. Right on. Yeah, like that is a very specific customer of mine. Where are your ratty shirts? 
those are the ones I want because they only care about how soft they are. Really? Mm -hmm. well, this one is and soft. And also, we do a lot of selling for costuming. So, Fear of the Walking Dead is still being filmed. I prefer that she buy that shirt and distress it, zombify it, versus one of our nice crisp shirts. Oh, so if just I to give trash her these up. options, she will pick these out instead of the other crisp things, and I'm taking care of both markets. Well, she's not getting this one. That's right. Over your so. dead body. Oh, yeah. Over your dead shambling corpse. Oh my gosh, yeah. this has been amazing. I feel like the biggest thing is to get the clothes on. Like everything changed. Just try it on, try it on. The try moment it on. I saw myself in the mirror, I was like, oh, okay, no, 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 I get it. I Now I see. And I feel like I could keep on going around picking stuff. Yeah, and uh, just make yourself comfortable. Whatever you feel good in. Uh, who gives a damn what everybody else thinks? These yeah, because what are, are people attracted to? Confidence. Confidence. Exactly. Confidence. Just confidence. All right, so for all the folks at home, if they want to experience exactly what we went through, head on over to Nubo on 47th and Airport. Yep, uh, down in Austin, uh, my favorite vintage store, Talina. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you so much, yeah, Talina. Of course. You, you, where are the capes? Where are the men's capes? Well, capes. Just capes, just capes in general. Genderless. Yeah, yeah. Got my Up eyes there. on some fringe. There's one. Right there. There's a few capes. It's a nice Zarafi. You know how I feel when I realize that I don't have Nord turned on? <laughs> well, okay, I'd never have Nord not turned on. It's always turned on. It is, it is very turned on, usually. Kicks Some... in the doors like, it's me, Nord VPN, And baby. I'm turned on! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how do you feel when he's, when Nord is not turned on, though? Shame. <laughs> how is it that you figure it out? Like, like, do you notice, like, that's a relevant targeted ad. Ah, I don't have Nord VPN turned on! Exactly, I'm like, this is supposed to be in French! Everything's supposed to be in French, and it's not! And I just feel naked and exposed. I like to be bulletproof and, and covered by the security of NordVPN. I always have the big map on one of my monitors with the big fat green icon showing me where I am in the world at oh, all times. It makes you feel like you're in the command center where it's just telling you everything is good, you're exactly. here, everything's safe. You're and waiting for like the war games, like uh, warheads to start going exactly. off. Whenever you say how to browse safely on anything, everybody's like, eh, how about a VPN? And if you're gonna do that, you wanna do the one with the highest score, the perfect score that PC Magazine gave, NordVPN. It's military grade encryption and it is so affordable. It's just $2.99 per month for three years. Even less because you get a free month if you go to nordvpn.com slash rogue, that's R-O-G-U-E, and use promo code rogue at checkout. An extra month. Hot, yeah. Overplaying the bit. We're making it happen. But, dude, <laughs> I gotta make sure they don't forget. I always knew we were secretly meant to be a makeover show. <laughs> What if this is the one, the episode that just really takes off? <laughs> Next thing you know, we got a sh we got a series. <laughs> yeah. It's like my living nightmare of anxiety. <laughs> I'm having the whole world judge my fashion. <laughs>